Hello and welcome to my Bolt EUV. I am Jim and we're going from point A to point B. Climb in, let's go. So the previous two videos I did was about the charging experience I had on the thousand mile road trip over the Labor Day weekend. Well, we're gonna continue to talk about charging in this video, public charging specifically, and what is the reality of public charging here in the US today what is the future of public charging and how we can improve that overall experience for everyone. So the first question I want to ask is what can you expect when you set out to charge your vehicle at a public charger today? And I'm going to rehash one of the things I talked about last week and that is per minute versus per kilowatt hour. And the key question that I ask and I know it's beating a dead horse but I'm going to ask it again. How can you meter time on a DC fast charge unit for a product that is metered out to the customer in a measurable quantity known as kilowatt hours? And the answer is that you cannot do that. And I'm not gonna beat this dead horse too much, but this needs to change in the states where it's still being used. As for the user experience today, we're gonna examine how the various companies are doing with regard to their charging networks. And there are four metrics or four areas that we want to look at in specific. Those are reliability in terms of how, how the companies are rated, the speed for the DC fast charge units, but also how many level two chargers there are out there. And then locations. What amenities are available at most of these DC fast charge locations? And how easy are they to use? Well, we'll talk about reliability in one of several ways, but let's talk about level two chargers first. It's very hard to find something on reliability for all the chargers that are out there, but I did run across a JD Power & Associates survey for level two chargers and DC fast chargers. And for the level two chargers, Voltas are actually rated slightly higher than Teslas, the Tesla destination chargers specifically. And then charge points number three, SEMA Connect, which is now Blink, was number four. Electrify America is number five, and then Blink was number six. I won't talk too much about that because SEMA Connect has been absorbed into Blink. What about the DC fast chargers? Well, JD Power & Associates again showed that the Tesla superchargers were rated number one, and a distant second number two charge point, number three EVgo, and number four, Electrify America. How about the speed of the DC fast chargers here in the United States? Well, the growth of DC fast charge, uh, chargers range from 25 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts here in the US still. And believe it or not, the number one growth range there is 250 to 349. There's 8,500 ports available right now in the US and there was a 21.9% growth last year. Number two would have been those 1,800 ports now that are greater than 349 kilowatts. They grew by 17.1. Number three in terms of growth was the 2,600 ports in the range of 51 to 149 kilowatts, 16.2% growth. The 150 to 250 kilowatt range only grew by 8.8, .8, but amazingly, those chargers that are less than 51 kilowatts grew 11.8% in 2022. Now, why is that? Most of those are being installed at dealerships is why. So what kind of locations do you have as far as amenities go? Well, aside from dealerships, this is the big box store and it's the shopping centers and malls and things like that. But there's some interesting things going on. Waffle House is adding DC fast charger stations along major interstate routes. 7-Eleven and Circle K, you know, the famous gas stations, they're adding DC fast charge stations in their own networks. And Florida has DC fast charge stations at almost every other plaza along the Florida Turnpike now. That's the toll road here. Walmart and Target are attracting more DC fast charge companies to their parking lots. Bucky's, Love's, and Wawa and many others are trending towards EV charging stations as well. 
So that's the state of charge there, but what about the most important one, ease of use? Well, within the next five years, the CCS and Chatamo chargers, those monstrosities, will go the way of the dinosaur here in the USA. Virtually every major automobile manufacturer has chosen the NAX setup from Tesla and will begin providing official adapters to their customers early next year who have the CCS and Chatamo plugs on their cars. And those who do not, those manufacturers who do not, will find it very difficult to charge on the road when the CCS and Chatamo plugs disappear from the networks, and I predict that'll be in the next five years. So with the introduction of NAX, I predict that ease of use is going to get better and better over time. Well, the next question is pretty easy to answer. What can you expect to find when you use public chargers in the future? Well, the future is promising because of faster charging. Charger speeds will increase, yes, that's true, but battery sizes are going to decrease. The need for these 200 kilowatt hour battery packs is going to disappear. I think you'll see the size of battery packs decrease as efficiency increases. Second thing, more amenities. Uh, gas station conversions. Think of Bucky's. There are going to be some gas stations over the next 10 to 20 years that convert from gas stations to EV stations. And you're going to start seeing more and more restaurants offer chargers to their customers. Also, more locations. Just think outside the box. DC fast charge systems at rest stops along the United States interstate systems would be a miraculous thing. And then level two chargers in public parks where you go to spend hours at a time, three, four hours at a time, and other public spaces where you wind up spending three or four hours at a time. And then also level two chargers at amusement parks like Disney and Universal here in the Orlando area and out in California. I can tell you that right now there are not many level two chargers and even fewer DC fast chargers on Disney's and Universal's properties. I expect to see that increase over the next couple of years. And the third and final and most important question is how can we improve the overall user experience today? Well, we've taken the first step and that's NAX, the North American Charging Standard from Tesla. That's going to improve things drastically, but the total number of charging stations we're still failing at. More amenities and better locations, we're still failing at that. Solar power charging locations and covered locations, we're failing at that. Filling in the gaps in coverage in places like Maine and Mississippi and Louisiana, we're getting better at that, and there are some chargers going into those locations. But the sixth and most important one is let the choices of the consumer drive demand. We cannot legislate this change. It has to come from the consumer. And out of all this, we only score a 1.5 out of a possible six, which is not good. That's a failing grade right now in the, in the state of EVs and charging in this nation. As always, I want to to let you know that your thoughts and comments are welcome and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. But in summary, public charging today the experience is infuriating and hateful but with NAX it will improve. The future is now and we need to expand infrastructure now and improving the user experience will take work but at the end of the day it is worth it. It will make the implementation of electric vehicles as the norm easier and more accessible to the average user. Thanks for stopping by. Remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like, and ring the notification bell if you want to know when I upload something new. Also, remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you real soon or somewhere along the route from point A to point B.